Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we explore a possible theory behind the currently unnamed protagonist of Poppy Playtime, and how they may in fact be tied to Factory Worker Rich. There is plenty of evidence to support the idea of our player character being associated with Rich, who began life as a warehouse worker at Playtime Co. before gradually working his way up the ranks. Rich is a character we have heard from in all three chapters so far, and is one of the few recurring human characters in the game. This is significant. So with that said, sit back, relax, and let's take a look at why Rich may in fact be the identity of our mysterious protagonist in Poppy Playtime. To begin with, let us recap everything we know about the character of Rich. Now the best way to do this is to listen to and then quickly analyse each of the three audio logs we've received from Rich up to this point, each found on a VHS tape in chapters 1 through 3. The first tape is located in a warehouse area during Poppy Playtime Chapter 1. It is a conversation between Rich and his co-worker Avery. Check it out. Rich. Where are they keeping the huggy boxes? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Remember when maintenance left it a sweep of this place? <laughs> no. Exactly! Nobody in this stupid company knows what they're doing. Oh, I swear, I haven't seen a single box in its place since they started flooding the storehouse with orphanage junk. Right. I get it. It's a nice program and all, on brand, but... Uh... It's just hard to be happy about it when manufacturing's on our necks about it, because we can't find stupid hockey boxes! Rich. Oh, you're right. You're right. It's... it's for the orphans. I just wish there were less boxes. From this recording, we get a sense for who Rich is. His personality, ethics, and mannerisms. Rich is a gruff and grumpy worker, who seems to be fed up with the state of management at the factory, angrily airing his grievances out loud to his co-worker, who tries to calm his nerves. Rich is frustrated by the crowded work conditions brought about by Playtime's Orphan Adoptive Care Initiative. Though we can tell deep down that Rich has a kind heart, at least towards the orphan kids. He believes that while the warehouse is cluttered, which causes cramped work conditions for him and his colleagues, it is ultimately born from an initiative that will give back to children who need a helping hand in life. A sentiment he agrees with and supports. Moving on to chapter 2 and we find the second rich VHS tape. This one collected up from a fallen shelving unit in a toy storage room. It seems upper management caught wind of Rich's grievances and have now demoted him to the island of Misfit Toys, a place where rejected designs were sent to languish on these shelves. Well, it finally happened. After years of being ignored, the company actually heard all my complaints. Yep, they listened to them very carefully. And I guess my words must have really inspired them to take action. Because the next day I got demoted down here to the freaking island of misfit toys! <laughs> here we witness Rich's growing hatred and frustration with Playtime Co. It also seems he was the mastermind behind the design of an ill conceived prototype toy known as Sir Poops a Lot, a failed design that never saw the light of day. So this tells us that Richard worked in various departments at the factory over the years. The third and final audio log from Rich to date is discovered while exploring the caves below the playcare in Chapter 3. This recording captures a dialogue between Rich and another senior worker called Stuart. Take a listen. That stupid clucky elevator. What was that, Richie? Nothing, nothing. Let's just get this shipment dropped and go. <laughs> I take it you're not a fan of this place, are you? Nope. Never liked the feel of it. I mean, don't you think these kids deserve some real sunlight instead of floodlights and painted skies? Hell, we're not even allowed to talk to these kids. Isn't that... <clears throat> <sighs> Sorry, Stu. <laughs> Sorry? That doesn't sound like the rich I know. Well, 
trying to stop being so pissed off all the time. My wife says I'm a lovely man, but I gotta control my temper. So, I'm doing it for her. <laughs> You're just different, Rich. Honest to a fault. But, I always like that about you. Yeah? <laughs> well, you're one of the few. Hmm. You know, Richie, with my retirement coming up, hmm, they've been pushing hard for me to choose my replacement. I'm actually thinking about giving the role to you. What, uh, really? Yeah, really. Nothing official yet, but I think there's a decent guy beneath all that gruff. An honest, hard-working man. You prove me right? Uh, I'd say your chances are pretty good. Wow, I, uh, geez, I don't know what to say. I, I'm just glad to see not everyone in this place has it out for me. Not everybody, Rich. Not everybody. This is perhaps the most insightful clip yet, showing us a more vulnerable side to Rich's character, who seems fed up with the way he's been mistreated by many of his co-workers. However, Rich's supervisor Stuart seems to be looking out for him and hoping to set up Rich as his replacement. This tells us that before the events we now experience while playing through the story of Poppy Playtime, Rich had been promoted to a senior position. It also tells us how he seemed to care about the treatment of the orphan kids, and was suspicious of the secrecy surrounding the play care where they resided. So with Rich's backstory now established, let's take a look at the evidence for why our protagonist may in fact be linked to this gruff yet kind-hearted character. Before establishing a firm link between the protagonist and Rich, let's quickly recap what we already know about our mysterious lead. We don't know too much, but over the course of the three chapters currently available, one thing has been made abundantly clear. Our protagonist was once an employee at Playtime Co. In chapter one, they receive a mysterious note inviting them back to the long abandoned factory, some 10 years after they originally left. Then, in Chapter 2, we hear this very revealing monologue from antagonist Mommy Longlegs. They left Mommy to die alone. Mommy didn't deserve that. But you, you worked here. So if anyone deserves to die alone, it's you. Mommy remembers our protagonist and explains in no uncertain terms that they once were a worker at the factory. In chapter three, we experience two hallucinogenic events triggered by exposure to the nightmare inducing red smoke. The first of these is easily missable, appearing as a reversed audio loop that emits from a radio. If we revert the audio back, it reveals a cryptic message. <laughs> Again, this confirms our protagonist was a former worker at the factory, one who missed a party on the 8th of August 1995 which for those who don't remember, was the day the Hour of Joy occurred. The Hour of Joy was the hour in which the living toy experiments rebelled against their creators and embarked on a kill-crazy rampage throughout the facility, claiming the lives of the many workers trapped inside with them. However, for some reason, our protagonist did not show up for work that day and so escaped the grisly fate of their co-workers. Towards the end of chapter three, our protagonist is exposed to a high dose of red smoke, sending them into a nightmarish trance. 
Here, they recall past events that they experienced at the factory while once working there, reliving the cruelty that befell the orphan children, many of whom were transformed into living toys as part of the insidious experiments carried out by playtime scientists. Messages are also scratched on the walls and floors throughout this chapter, some speaking directly to the player and reminding them of the guilt that haunted them after escaping the factory all those years earlier. Let's wrap up this video by taking the evidence we've looked at so far and using it to make a connection between Rich and our player character. The first connection is obvious. Both Rich and our protagonist once worked at Playtime Co, but this alone isn't enough to conclude that the two are one and the same. However, if we take a look at the kind of person Rich was, we can form the picture of a man who not only had a motive to quit, but also may have ended up haunted by guilt. Over the years, Rich rose through the ranks at Playtime, but along the way he grew bitter and disgruntled by management's treatment of both his co-workers and the suspicious activity surrounding the orphan kids, who he seemed to genuinely care for. His promotion from Stuart would have landed him a role where he was exposed to some of the more insidious goings on at the facility, and therefore we can logically conclude that Rich may have seen a thing or two that raised some proverbial red flags. If anyone had motive to leave before the hour of joy occurred, it was this particular worker, and this is made crystal clear via multiple audio logs. Rich also had a motive to return. We know that his wife, the person closest to him, spoke of his kind heart and good character, and we also see glimpses of this through the way that Rich talks, as outlined earlier in our analysis of his recordings. So, ethically, abandoning his co-workers and the orphan kids wouldn't have sat right with someone like Rich, and he would have been haunted by guilt over the years that followed. This would make him the perfect candidate to return to the factory and try to right the wrongs that once occurred there. All he needed was an invitation, one he received via a note revealed to us at the beginning of this sinister story. But of course there's no way to know for sure if our protagonist is indeed rich. Perhaps he befell a different fate. But it is curious how the game places so much importance on a character that we have never seen in the game. Unless, of course, this very important character is the one we've been controlling the entire time. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments section below, and if you enjoyed this video remember to leave a like, and of course subscribe for more horror related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.